Hey YouTube, it's Thomas here. So today I'm going to talk about the KEF LS50W. This is the wireless version where you have the amp, preamp and DAC built in all into the speaker. And uh, it goes for about $3,000 Canadian. So uh, I was very curious about it. Uh, the reason I, I bought it is because on the internet people claim that this will outperform the original KEF LS50 even if you put a $10,000 front end setup, meaning that the DAC preamp amp uh, costing $10,000, if, even if you plug that to the original KEF LS50, these will outperform it. So I, of course, I'm very curious, how's that possible? So that's why I want to pick it up. Uh, another reason why I picked it up uh, is because I had the original one. So I just wanted to know what's the difference between both. Uh, so I spent a bit of time with it uh, and I'm going to share my findings today and little things that I found along the way. Now, for those of you who have not seen my video on the original KEF LS50, please go check it out. And for those of you who are too lazy to watch that video, I'll summarize uh, the, the sound on these both speakers. They basically have the same sound signature, which is they're very revealing, bright, sharp, impressive clarity. Uh, it has a very lively presentation, very forward presentation. Instruments are clean and precise, and these have, I think, a bigger soundstage than the original KEF 50 because the bass is better on these speakers. They're good for uh, instruments such as uh, triangle and cymbals because these metal bass tone tweeters, they're great for, for instruments like that. Uh, they're great for music like this. I love the sparkling sound that comes out from these speakers and it's just something that I don't get from soft tone tweeters. So it basically has everything if you're looking for an audiophile level speaker. And of course the issue with the metal based on tweeter is that it can be a little bit too bright. If you look at the comment section uh, on my original LS50 video, you see that a lot of people gave up on it because of the brightness problem. And Every time when I transition from a soft dome tweeter to a metal based dome tweeter, because I have a, a, a few speakers that I use frequently, uh, my body reacts to it because of that sharpness. It's like eating spicy food. You know, it tastes great if you love spicy food. I, I like spicy food, but it's a little bit painful. So I, I have a love-hate relationship with metal based dome tweeters. And I remember that when I was younger, I, I like pushing the treble on my receiver. I, I never understood why people want to tone down the treble, but now in my older age, I start doing that. So it really depends on your taste. And if you like the metal based dome tweeter type of sound, do not underestimate it. It is not for everyone, but for those of you who like these kind of sound, it is phenomenal, fantastic, amazing. And finally, these, have, uh, these speakers have a very big sound stage, even more than the original KEF LS50. Very expensive. Now, for me, these speakers, even the original KEF LS50, needs power. I, I'm the kind of person who only buys high power amp because I don't know why. Some of the uh, low power amp that I come across have this ho hollowness. It sounds a little bit thin. I'm not saying that all 100 watt amps, all 45, 50 watts amps sounds hollow. I'm just saying what I noticed over the years is that whenever I come across a system that sounds a bit thin, it's, the amp is always lacking in power. Now let's think about this for a second. The original KEF LS50 is rated from uh, 25 watts to 100 watts. That's what the, if you go to the website, they're suggesting that you use uh, an amp uh, at that kind of power. But why are they putting a 230 watt amp into this KEF LS50? I never understood that. Why? My friend actually asked me that question. So, okay, something to think about. Now this one has a 200 watt class D amp for the bass and then a 30 watt class AB for the, the tweeter and I guess maybe the mid range. So uh, it sounds, it doesn't sound uh, like a class D uh, amp. Uh, it sounds really, really good. So if you look at the uh, the unit, it looks exactly like the original KEF LS50, just a bit longer. Uh, at the back, you have a few inputs. You have the optical input, the RCA input. Uh, you have a subwoofer out. 
uh, Ethernet input and you have another e Ethernet jack to connect to the other speaker. The wireless features are pretty good. I can play music from my uh, cell phone. I can send music from my hard drive on the network uh, to this uh, speakers directly. Uh, I find with wireless, it is just a little bit uh, less good uh, when compared to a plugging it with a network cable. You can also plug your computer to it because it has a USB uh, input. And uh, yeah, and for those, uh, as I mentioned before, it has a subwoofer output. So if you find that there's not enough bass, uh, you use it. Now I'll tell you the difference between both. The bass on these speakers are better than the original one. So one thing I don't like about these speakers is that the controls are on the top and there's no indicator in front to tell me what input I'm on. And this is annoying because I'm testing the speakers, uh, swapping between RCA and optical. Every time I have to stand up and check, okay, so what input I'm on. So that's a bit annoying. Uh, another thing I don't like is that the remote control sucks. It's made of plastic, feels really cheap, light. And for a $3,000 speaker, I expect a little bit more. Now the speaker itself, however, is top notch. Super quality, just like the original CAF LS50. Heavy. Uh, and I love the design. So the first day I got it home, I actually set it up upstairs. Now upstairs um, is uh, where I, sometimes I work. I work from home and uh, I work uh, in the living room. So when I set up my speakers upstairs, it's usually to listen to music, background music. Um, it's, I don't go into critical listening upstairs. I wanted to, to live with it for a while, use it every day just to get a sense of it. Uh, and Right away when I got it home, I had to reset all the settings on it, uh, connect to my uh, network instead, uh, download the app on my phone, install it. And I have to say the app had problems with my own um, network hard drive. It worked, stopped working, I had to reset, work, stopped working, I have to reset my network every time. Um, but that, that could be just because of my network. So uh, I put everything to standard settings and then I was disappointed because the first few minutes when I listened to it, my first reaction was it's not as bright as the original Kef LS50. Now that's a good thing. But as I keep listening to it, I noticed that I actually missed the original Kef LS50's clarity. It just doesn't have the same magic, the same detail. It's like they took away the chili from my spicy food. So. I wasn't able to get into it. And I keep asking myself, so why do people say that these speakers can rival the $10,000 setup? I don't get it. So after a while, my friends dropped by, the first friend dropped by and said, you know what, the original Kef LS50 sounded better. This is just mediocre at best. And I told him, you know, maybe it's the room, right? Upstairs, the room is not treated. I have it close to a wall, open space. Well, down here, I have uh, absorption panels. I have these thick curtains. I have these uh, tubes. Um, I have carpets. Uh, these drywall on my ceiling, they absorb sound seven times more than regular drywall and so forth. So I was thinking it could be the room that's causing the problem. So uh, my other friends dropped by and they, they share the same feeling that it's not as good as the original Kef LS50. And another thing, I was thinking maybe because at the time, my original Kef LS50, I was driving them with $20,000 plus front end. So it's normal that it can beat whatever you have in here, like this small amp and preamp compared to this big Macintosh uh, uh, power amp and, and preamp. It, it kind of makes sense. So I, I don't understand why people say that, you know, it can beat a $10,000 setup. So after a while, one day I said, okay, it's time for me to really, really test these Kef LS50. And I said, okay, I'm going to set up the DSP correctly. So after spending some time playing with the DSP, that's when I realized, oh my God, now I get it. So why was there such a big difference with DSP? I'm going to try to illustrate this with uh, another passion of mine, which is photography. So if you look at the photos uh, here, this is a, a dance I shot recently. And uh, on the top, that's a photo that, sh uh, that I shot. And the bottom is my second shooter. So we're using the same level of equipment. And yet, because of the way uh, flash is used differently, placed differently, the outcome is completely different. Now, photography is 
the understanding of light. Light has similar properties as sound, right? Sound, when you bounce on the wall, it reflects back, just like light. And if you look at the second photo, what happened is that the photographer shot the light up the ceiling and it bounced back. So it covers the whole room. And that got me thinking, when I put the speaker close to the wall, it's doing exactly the same thing. The bass is hitting the wall and it's reflecting back. And people usually say, you know, if you find that there's not enough bass with your speaker, just put it close to a wall. There's a problem. There's a price to pay for it. What you're going to get is muddy bass. So that's why, you know, I, I said before, it's like there's a veil in front of the, the speakers upstairs. It's because of that bass. I cannot listen deep into the recording. That clarity is gone. Now, with the DSP turned on and adjusted for whatever setup I have there, the bass was more tight in control. And then I go like, oh my gosh, Kef LS50, long time no see. That clarity, I start to hear it again. And I feel like an idiot demoing th these speakers to my friend with DSP set to standard. And I start enjoying it. It's incredible. I'm like, oh wow, these speakers are amazing. Now, do keep in mind that is assuming that you like bright sounding speakers, you like the metallic sound, you like to hear the pin dropping on the floor. If you like that kind of sound, then these speakers are for you. And that got me thinking, I can put a $20,000, $30,000 front end upstairs with the original Kef LS15, but because it's placed next to the wall, I'm still going to have that, that muddy bass problem. So I can understand that under certain circumstances, because of placement issue, these will outperform a $10,000 setup just because of DSP. It's a bit different when I brought it downstairs because downstairs I have open space now. I can really let the, the speaker push its bass to the max, treble to the max. And I have to say, it's fantastic. I, I'm blown away by it, actually. And uh, it is not the same level as when I put a $20,000 setup to the front end. It lacks that silky smoothness, these ones, compared to when I set it up with a $20,000 front end. However, the base on this will still win against whatever setup I have uh, with the original LS50. Because the base is definitely better with these speakers, they go down to 40 hertz. And the original one cannot do that. So this is one of the speaker where I go like, okay, I, I probably can don't use a subwoofer and get away with it. Just like the Bukhar S300. It doesn't go as low and deep as the Bukhar S300, but it has enough punch and it's more tight and lean. So there's advantages to both speaker. And as I keep listening downstairs and because I, I have the space to let the speaker shine, uh, I have to say, wow, for 3000 bucks, they, they did an impressive job. Because if you think about it, let's say I go outside and I buy a uh, I spent 1,800 buying the front end because the speaker itself is about 1,002. You add both together to get 3,000. I don't think I can get better sound than this. You got to buy speaker cables, interconnects, preamp, amp, and DAC. And at, for 1,800 bucks, you know, no, it, it, I, I don't think so. Another thing I discover is uh, one of the questions on the forum is uh, if I use an external DAC, is it better than the internal DAC? One of the arguments is that because everything goes through DSP, it doesn't matter if you use an external or internal DAC. And I can say that it does matter. And the reason I know is because I have a Macintosh C47. I just picked up one. And on it, it has tone control. So I plug it to RCA. And then I realize, oh, I hear that Macintosh signature. And I say, well, I can easily confirm if it matters or not by just playing with the tone control. And as I turn up the treble, I mean, it, it shows up in the, in the final output, right? So therefore, I know whatever DAC you plug to it, it makes a difference. Now, before you say, oh, darn, I should go out and buy a better DAC, I say, don't bother. Because for this price, this class, um, the DAC is good enough. And the reason is because I was trying to do some A-B tests with the OPPO 105D. And... Um, for those of you who don't know this uh, Blu-ray player, it has a very good DAC, a 9018 Sabre chipset. 
so it's really good for music and it has dedicated output for music listening and i couldn't hear the difference between that deck and the one in here the macintosh one c47 yes i hear the difference and you know as i said i can show there's a difference i'll pass the blind test 100 percent of the time but with the 105d i cannot pass the blind test and the 105d blu-ray is a two thousand dollar blu-ray player so you know that you're getting really good uh, you're getting a very good DAC in this speaker. So who should buy this? If you're asking me if you should buy it, you're actually asking me for marriage advice, right? To death do us apart. It's not like a girlfriend where, you, you know, once you're done, okay, let's change. You cannot change. Amp, preamp, everything is built in. It's until it dies or, you know, <laughs> until you sell the whole thing. So it really depends on uh, your situation. Now, keep in mind that because everything is built in, there's a risk associated to it. If you go on the forums and read up about it, make sure you buy it with a Visa card to extend your warranty because it only has one year warranty for the electronics. There's that risk. So you should buy it if uh, placement is an issue. Uh, if you have to put it on your desk, for example, when you if you have to work very close to it, because the settings on it where you you it's made for uh, putting on the desk. So the, even if you have the original Kef LS50 with a very good front end, I, I don't think it can do better than this with DSP. Uh, and for those of you who don't like um, really bright sounding speaker, there's a setting on it, as I mentioned before, where you can lower the treble. It still has that metallic sound, even if you do that. So make sure, make sure that you are okay with that kind of sound before you buy these speakers. For those who, who don't mind or who enjoy that kind of sound, uh, you're going to get a lot out of these speakers. There's not a lot of negative uh, I can say about it besides that brightness issue. Uh, I spent a bit of time thinking, okay, so what else can I say that's bad about it? It's actually nothing. The price is good, actually. Um, would I buy this or would I buy the separate Oh, you know, the original LS50? I It, it really depends on my situation if my wife tells me you're not allowed to buy any more for the next two years then i might go for this because of the dsp right but if i know i can change speakers during that period then i might go with a separate unit because it's more flexible right and let's say for example uh, i get this and i i just can't stand the brightness then i can swap to let's say a bukar s 300 or um, ELAC B6.2 so there are more choices but you know if, if placement is important for you and you don't want to have all those separate units then this really do make a lot of sense um, in a future video I'll compare, I'll compare this one to another all-in-one solution that I picked up recently a budget one and um, these uh, once you ever get a chance to try these budget one you'll appreciate how good these are these are these are phenomenal i have uh, such a blast with them all right so i'm just going to end the video at this point uh, i spent a bit of time downstairs with them and with the open space uh, it sounds absolutely fantastic i have to say uh, i knew that they were good because of all the positive review uh, but it's one thing to read up on it and to actually experience it uh, definitely recommend it for those who are okay with the metallic and bright sounding type. If you're okay with that kind of speaker, absolutely, um, this is a good recommend. So uh, questions, comment, uh, you know where to leave them. Thanks.